Hi folks, and welcome back. I was uh, reviewing uh, a couple of Dr. Gerald Pollack's videos on uh, structured water, and he has one on electricity, uh, electrical properties and stuff of structured water. And uh, in that one, he uses a, um, a polymer uh, PAA, which I think is polyalcohol acetate. And, uh, and he says uh, w when they use that polymer, it forms uh, some uh, uh, acetate tubulate. Uh, less of water. Uh, he's, he's demonstrated that it can uh, let water f will flow through those tubes just uh, through the uh, exclusion zone principles. And so, uh, anyway, and I noticed something when I was playing around with the um, alcohol uh, here a month or so ago uh, that if I took uh, denatured alcohol, which I have here in this little cup right here, and then I take a little bit of the, the clear. Uh, PVA glue and put it and put it in the uh, alcohol. I will show you something here. I'll just pour a few drops down in there. And stir it up just a dab. Now you can't you won't be able to see those in there, but if I stir that around a little bit. You see that? See that dripping off the? Uh, I don't know if you can see that or not. You can see the gel dripping off of that. And if I put a lot in there, uh, here it goes now. There it goes. It, it takes a little bit for it to react, and which is stirred around. Look at that. You see that? gloop of glop of stuff on the end of that stirrer right there. It's real stringy. And uh, and look how it's getting more and more as I stir it around. And it gets more and more stringy. I think those strings are actually little tubes. Like nanotubes. Look at that. And so, I think this would make an excellent gel right here to use. I threw it away before <laughs> and, and, and tried what was left in the water, and that worked, it worked pretty good. It really made a nice smooth, what was left really made a nice smooth, but I think this will actually work a lot better. And it's, I mean, it's really, uh, really jelly-like, and it has a whole, it's holding a whole lot of, uh, of uh, alcohol in it. So what I want to do right now is I'm going to take this here and I'm going to put it over in this one and then I'm going to add a little water to it and wash the alcohol out of it and then try that on the, in the cell. Alrighty. Let me wash that up real good, and then I'll be back. Well, I'm back, and I took that ball of gel, and I put it in some distilled water here to, to wash the alcohol out of it, and the whole thing just dissolved in the water. <laughs> so I guess uh, I won't be making a uh, cell out of, out of that if I have to dissolve in, if it dissolves in water, uh, although I may be able to use that for something. I don't know try and uh, mix some titanium dioxide or something with it. It might have just broke up the, the uh, long tubes into small chunks. And that may be what happened. But you can see we still have some, some stuff left in here. And uh, so I've got two things to experiment around with right there. But uh, right now what I want to show you is, is something else. <coughs> When I was in town the other day, I bought some of this uh, green slime uh, that uh, used to do uh, seal punctures in tires and stuff. And the reason I bought it was because it doesn't say on it what it's what's in it. Nowhere on there does it say anything about what's in it. 
It does say that it's non-toxic, though, and this leads me to believe that it's some type of uh, a PVA that's been gelled with something. So, uh, <coughs> and I tried, I tried this and uh, making a cell out of it uh, yesterday, and uh, <coughs> had some real interesting uh, results on it. So I'm going to set up again and show you that, and you can tell me what you think about it. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. And what I've got here is just a piece of paper with some green slime here spread on one side of it. And I'm going to take that and put it down with the slime side on the on the zinc anode. Like that. And then whoops. I'm going to lay our stainless steel on top of it. And we've got 70, climbing at 76. Now remember just the, the PVA piece of uh, cooling towel that I used the other day. It only got 6.6 uh, 6 volts out of it. we got 0.77 here. Although it looks like a, and let me put a little bit of water on it. There's some distilled water. We didn't. I didn't wet that paper at all. In case, but we can see we've got uh, about 0.76 volts on it, which is higher than the, just the PVA alone. And that the PVA cooler developed one milliamp of power when we shorted it out. And this is it. We did this time. The milliamps are over here. And we're on the 200 milliamp setting. I'll put it on the 20 milliamp setting. Okay. And here we go. Ready? Three, two, one. Look at that. 20. See that? 23 point. Or no. I'm sorry. 2.37 uh, milliamps. And there's nothing on that except for that slime on the one side. Okay. And. Now we're just climbing back up to to uh, 0 0.70. So the PV, this uh, this slime right here also um, creates an exclusion zone, just like titanium dioxide and a lot of other things do. It's the hydrophilic and hydrophobic surfaces that uh, that's important, I think. So we're back to the uh, same place we were before. Let's see what we get the next time. Ready? Three, two, one. Yeah, two, two milliamps again. So we get this is better than the PVA apparently. And I, well, I think it is PVA. I think it's just uh, gelled differently with something else. And they, they don't say what's on and what's in that. And they should, in my opinion, everything that's produced ought to have what's in it uh, posted on it. But this is apparently no. They don't want anybody to know what's in that. It's the reason they don't post post anything on there. It's probably real easy to make, I would think. So anyway, uh, now I want to put a little bit of uh, of uh, graphite on one side, on the other side of that, and test it again, and see what we get. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back, and I switched the meters around and put them like I had it before, so I can see the the uh, amps better. All right. <laughs> I'm going to take this back apart now and then paint a little bit of graphite and water on it. I haven't done this beforehand either, so I have no idea what's going to happen here. But we're going to put some graphite on it, and I suspect we'll get more amps out of it because we've got uh, something to store some energy in. All right. Now let's put the cathode back on. Put the terminal back on it here. Alright, here we go. There we go. And we see our voltage has gone up too. Look at there. And it's still climbing. Look at that. 
just by putting some energy storage on it. That's pretty nice. Just graphite and uh, slime and a separator paper. And we're still climbing. We're at 108. Alright, so we're almost up to one, one pin. Man, I can feel electricity moving in that battery through the end of my finger. Okay, here we go. Let's test it now and see what kind of amps we got. They're over here. We're on the 20. I'm going to put it on the 200 milliamp scale in case it goes over 20. Alright, ready? Three, two, one, ten, eleven. Oh, it's climbing. Climbed to eleven point eight. Let's see what in the wow, look at that. We're already back to one oh two. Alright, so there's one oh three. So really I think any hydrophilic surface uh, that will produce an exclusion zone will produce electricity. Titanium dioxide is just really good at it is all. Alright, ready? Let's do it again. We're at 1036. 3, 2, 1. 12 that time. So I climbed up to 12, 6. So it does the same thing it, it, uh, as the titanium dioxide does too. The amps are going up a little bit. The voltage is dropping a little bit. The amps are going up. Let's see if it does it again. Let's put just a dab of water on it here. Got to keep these things well hydrated. Alright, so we're... Okay, so now that dropped our voltage down, but I bet our amps went up. So we're at 90... Point nine three five. Ready? Three, two, one. No, it didn't. That's interesting, isn't it? Now we added water to it and it went down and got did worse. Alright, the self-charge on this isn't very fast. It's take about five minutes to uh, get back to ninety point nine three volts. Maybe not quite five minutes, maybe four minutes, something like that. So anyway, uh, let's test it again see what we got. Ready? Three, two, one. And it's down to nine. Okay, so the water really didn't help at that time, and I'm not sure why. Okay, let's, uh, now, I want to put a little bit of uh, uh, phosphoric acid on it, and we'll see what that does to it. I'm sure it's going to increase, oops. Here we go, a little phosphoric acid. There's six drops. And our bolts are going up, obviously. And this should produce a lot more amps, I'm sure, too. We're, we've got an electrolyte in it now, so but we'll see how many what kind of amps it gets out of it. Let's go ahead and just test it right there at 112. Around, it's jumping around now. Ready? Three, two, one. Forty-nine. Nice holding power too. Look at there, holding 45. 